Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto's demonic evolution crossed paths with Saiyan power? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Everything was gone. That was the only thing traveling through the blonde, hero's, mind and that was another thing how could one be a hero when everyone was dead or dying. Tears cascaded down the blonde's whiskered cheeks as the memories of his friends dying constantly being played back in his head. Why, he thought to himself, why couldn't I save them, why wasn't I strong enough? He couldn't help but to think these thoughts because in the end he wasn't strong enough. He wasn't strong enough to keep his precious people safe. He had broken his most important promise and betrayed his own words. But he was soon brought out from his mourning by the maniacal laughing of the one who had started this all in the first place. Naruto looked up with nothing but hatred in his eyes as he looked upon what was once a student of his father's. Obito Uchiha, ha ha ha, it look as though I have won Uzumaki, screamed the Uchiha in an almost psychotic manner as he looked down on the blonde from a nearby tree on the outskirts of the clearing in which Naruto now stood. How can you that when everyone is dead, Naruto screamed as he was becoming overcome with rage at how easily this madman had blown of his friend's deaths before he smirked deviously before saying in an almost to calm manner. Besides how can you have truly won when there is no one left on this earth to control, Naruto's smirk only grew into his full-blown grin as he and the Kyubi got front row seats to the funniest reaction either of them had ever seen. To say Obito was angry was an understatement, he completely lost the plot as he realized that he was so caught up in winning the war that he didn't realize that the more he killed the less minions he could claim at the end of it all. As the Jubi roared in the background he finally snapped as a wave of pure insanity took over the Uchiha as he, in a last ditch effort cast his Kamui straight at Naruto with an insane smirk stretching his lips but all he received in return was the soft smile of someone who after all that had happened to him was ready to give in to fate. XXXXXXXXXX Naruto woke up in a sea of darkness and it was only because of the Kyubi which for some reason he didn't know was still stuck inside him that he could even see his own body. It was then that Naruto noticed that he appeared to be floating and could feel nothing solid other than himself and that the reason he couldn't see anything other than himself was simply because there was nothing to see in the first place. He was at a loss for what happened until he heard the malevolent voice of what had become his last living friend. Kit. Listen to me. The fox told Naruto to which he gained the blonde's undivided attention. Well there's nothing else to do, right? Naruto thought to himself with a smirk. You know I can still hear your thoughts right, to which Naruto suddenly lost his smirk and pouted to himself silently about overgrown fuzzballs and how they had to be so mean. When the fox had stopped laughing he immediately took on a serious face. One that Naruto soon copied before he asked. Where are we anyway? Only for the fox to snort before explain in a very simplistic manner, he's known Naruto all his life and by now knows how to get through the boy's dense skull. Kit, we are in a space between dimensions, after letting that sink in he continued. Because the state of Obito's mind was in such a war with itself it seems that instead of transferring us into his own dimension it seems we have been blasted into a space in between his and another meaning that unless something happens we will simply float here for all eternity as your body slowly decomposes to put in a nice way. The fox ended with a smirk as he waited for the outburst to come but to his surprise it never did and as listened in to the 16 year. Old's thoughts he realized why. Naruto was once again thinking about his friend and how they all ended up dying for no reason other than because a madman wanted them dead, all because he wasn't strong enough. The Kyubi decided he had enough of the downcast thought as he tried to brighten his container's mood, not because he cared of course, he only did it to stop the depressing thoughts from spreading to his mind to, yeah that must be it. Cheer up kit, what's done is done and no one can change that. All we can do is live on for those that we remember. And stick to our own ideals as we use this chance that they gave us to lead a happy life in their honor to prove to them that their lives were sacrificed for a reason so that they may finally rest in peace knowing that at least after all this you who meant so much to them are safe and out of harm's way. The Kyubi finished as the boy who had been pulled into his mindscape just before the speech looked up to him in awe before recovering and asking. But how am I to do that when I am trapped in a space between dimensions? 
He practically yelled only for a vicious smirk to appear on the fox's face, it's hard to look kind when you 50-story high fox made solely out of chakra. As I said earlier kid, we are stuck in here until something changes and luckily for you I have the ability to do just that. Of course nothing comes without a price but you don't need to worry about that right now. That may be true however I believe I should know all this, price, it comes with. Only for the giant fox to sigh as it looked straight through the boy and into the ongoing sewer that stretched out behind him as he thought about what he was going to say next. He could always just not tell him but the trust they had for each other was strong and as lame as it may seem the demon king liked it where it was. He sighed knowing that he would have to tell the truth to the boy. I will die and you will take my place. The fox stopped as he looked down on the boy's shocked face before continuing. It won't happen straight away if that's what you're thinking. No it will be a slow process which could take from anywhere up to two years however it is doubtful that it will take this long. During this time my power will begin to become yours and I will slowly die since my power is also my life force and because you were already so powerful beforehand and depending on how hard you train you could become much more powerful than I ever was. The blonde's face had only become more and more shocked throughout the course of what the fox had been telling him and it took him a while before he could even speak. B. But what about you? You are my last friend, I don't want you to die. I need you. The boy said practically in tear before the Kayubi spoke up again. I will not be gone straight away, the beast said in a fierce manner, I will still be with you for another two years and by then I'm sure you would have found other friends to annoy. The Kayubi smirked as the boy yelled. Hey, now stop your crying already, oh and by the way, I can tell you right now this is going to hurt like a. And just like that Naruto's world turned black as the bulldozer of pain rolled over. Naruto woke up and the pain was re-registered with the blonde as he found himself in a position that he was sure Shikamaru would have loved while looking up at the cloudy sky above from what seemed to be the bottom of a crater he wondered for a moment before the thought was quickly cast aside due to the overwhelming pain the poor blonde was feeling. But he wouldn't get to wallow in self-pity for too long however as he felt a sudden surge of power coming straight for where he was at an astounding pace. This would be one of those times where Naruto could look back and be thankful at his status as a sage as he used the ability of being able to be in tune to nature to give him an advantage before he hide his own power and used one of Jiriya's jutsu known as the transparency jutsu to hide from his potential enemies due to the fact that he was in too much pain to get away using any other tactics. He was in pain dammit, but he wasn't in enough pain to not be able to pay attention to his surroundings or even listen in to what was being said around him and with his keen hearing. Thanks to the Kayubi, it just made it all the easier. As the former three strongest warriors of this world stepped into the crater which held him, Naruto controlled his breathing to a level only a ninja could. This being so quite not even the sharpest of Namekians could hear. This was when he got his first glimpse of the people he would one day proudly announce as his friend, yes even Vegeta. The first one he laid his eyes upon was a teenage boy who looked to be around his age who had short jet black hair that seemed to go against gravity as well as onyx colored eyes and a face showing no signs of baby fat. He wore a dark blue fighting GI with no sleeves and some purple sweatbands, one on each rest. His physique was strong as you could see his lean muscle and by the way he held himself you instantly knew he was a warrior even if he seemed to be a little out of practice. This only seemed to intrigue the blonde more as he wondered how one so young could have such a huge amount of power yet be out of practice with it. The next person he took notice of was a shorter man who looked to be in his mid-thirties. He also had jet black hair that went against gravity however this character's hairstyle seemed longer than the others and almost looked like the tip of a flame, which would later explain a lot to the blonde. He had black eyes and no baby fat with what seemed to be an air of power and arrogance that seemed to follow the obvious warrior who sadly reminded him a lot about Sasuke. He to wears a blue fighting GI without sleeves which showed off his broad muscles. This showed him that unlike the boy his age he at least actually trained. The only thing that almost leads to Naruto exposing his cover due to laughter was the fact that the hard man was wearing white boots that looked like they were polished clean not too long ago which would be the source of many jokes later on down the track. The last man had Naruto stumped however it was not because of his different choice of clothing or even his pointy orange shoes. No the reason behind Naruto's confusion was the fact that this guy had green skin cause I mean sure Naruto has seen some pre messed up stuff in his life. Hell Kisame had blue skin but green? That was where Naruto finally had sound evidence that truly anything is possible. 
Once he finally got over this being's skin color he noticed how he seemed to be even taller than the boy his age and looked to be the calm collective warrior of the group but what truly puzzled Naruto was the fact that he seemed to have two other power sources outside of his own but Naruto would leave that for later as the powerful beings in front of him looked as though they were about to speak. This doesn't make any sense, the boy Naruto's age started. All of a sudden there's an enormous fluctuation of power only for that power to just disappear right before we got here, he finished. Huh, it probably ran off scared as soon as it felt my power level coming its way. The black flame haired one smirked to which everyone sweet dropped even Naruto. Can you pick up anything Piccolo? The boy asked. No, the now named Piccolo said to the boy. I cannot sense anything out of the ordinary, which is strange seeing as what occurred here not too long ago. And what did happen here? Asked the boy. I am not sure Gohan, and that's what scares me the most. Piccolo responded which made a shiver go down the boy's back. Well if nothing's going to happen then I have training to do, said the flame-haired one said before flying off into the distance. Damn it Vegeta, Gohan said irritably before turning to Piccolo to find him staring at one spot in the crater but shrugged it off before adding. I guess I'll be going to, and then he turned and left with a small goodbye to his life friend and mentor. When the boy was finally out of sight completely the green man had his eyes on the spot where Naruto laid before he stated. Whoever you are you can come out now, there was complete silence and after a good few minutes Piccolo was about to act when all of a sudden Naruto let his jutsu fall as he stared at the green man in front of him with so much intensity it seemed to intimidate even Piccolo if only just a little. Naruto just smirked in victory which only served to piss the Namekian off before he said plainly. You know I've seen some pretty, different, looking people in my life, hell I've even seen a blue man before but never did I think I would have the privilege of seeing a green man, as he said that last part with a bit of awe in his voice. The only thing that saved the blonde from an ass whopping as far as Piccolo was concerned was the fact that the blonde had used the word, privilege, and so it was with gritted teeth that Piccolo responded with. Well I've never seen a man with whiskers on his cheeks. Touché Mr. Green, touché. Naruto replied with a smirk as Piccolo's eyebrow formed a tick at the new nickname. Piccolo took a minute before asking. Why is it you're here? He paused and when the blonde didn't reply he continued. While I can sense an enormous amount of negative energy coming from you, I can also sense that it is not directed at either this planet or its people thus why I didn't tell the others about you and so I ask you once again, why are you here? The boy seemed to ponder on this a bit before looking up at the man in front of him with a serious face before he began talking. You are correct in assuming that I am no threat to this world or the people in it. As to why I am here, well that is because my own home was destroyed and I am the sole survivor and am currently looking for a new one which I think I have found and who knows maybe one day I will protect it alongside you, before he began to stand up a little wobbly and grinned in a way which reminded Piccolo of a fox. I would appreciate it if you keep the knowledge of my existence a secret from these, others, to yourself for at least until I show myself. The boy continued as he began to climb out of the crater. Once he had made it to the top he began walking out into the wilderness that surrounded the crater he was found in but not before adding. See you in two years Mr. Green Coon. He laughed out before running into the forest while laughing even harder as he heard the green man swear under his breath. It had been two long hard years of the most grueling training that Naruto had ever experienced before. Much harder than his semi at best training trip with his godfather but he wasn't going to dwell on the past. He had learned a lot from Kurama during the one and half a year that the demon had been around for before he was finally graced with death. The fox hadn't told Naruto but he could tell, after all the pain that comes with dying slowly that he had been hiding the pain from him. It was then that Naruto remembered how he had found his training ground for the last two years. Flashback. During the first week Naruto had felt a pull in the back of his mind and being the carefree kind of guy he was he followed and what he had amazed even him. He had found a cave that had what seemed to be the ruins of an old civilization. What strikes him the most however would later become his regular training ground. As Naruto wandered through the forgotten rubble of what was once almost certainly a prosperous civilization he chanced upon an old looking statue which seemed to be built into the side of the wall. When Naruto took a closer look he realized it was similar to those statues found behind the waterfall on the moving island back from his own world. What Naruto was looking at he would later discover was called a totem pole. He then noticed a small crevice in behind the pole and decided to put his hand in that crevice to check if anything was there. 
Naruto would later look back on that moment and be thankful of his own curiosity for this time it didn't kill the cat. When Naruto forced his hand into the small gap behind the totem pole his face rested against it while his eyes looked straight into the eyes of one of the faces on the totem pole. All of a sudden Naruto's hand pushed against something that resembled a button and the eyes he was looking into turned red. Naruto did not even flinch at this but instead stared straight back. Fear was not a word in Naruto's vocabulary. After a few moments of what felt like hours to Naruto the eyes he was facing off against seemed to fade from their frightening red which caused the blonde unease and turn into a more neutral green color as a hidden door appeared in front of Naruto on the wall next to the totem pole. As Naruto opened the hidden door his heart began to pound a lot faster in expectation and adrenaline. When the door opened the blonde was staring straight at, white, nothing but white, now it definitely reminded Naruto of what was behind the waterfall on the moving island. As soon as Naruto had entered the white out, as he liked to call it the door behind him quickly shut with a loud slam that seemed to signal a ring of changes as suddenly a few white structures were formed in front of the blonde. Why does everything have to be so damn white, Naruto mentally yelled to himself before thinking. If only all this white was orange, he smirked before realizing from the groan of disapproval that he had awoken his prisoner, friend from his slumber. How you like that color is a mystery to us all? Kayubi stated matter-of-fact voice that served to rile up the young blonde. Where the hell have you been anyway, I've been trying to get hold of you ever since I got about a week ago. I have been sleeping. It costs quite a bit of energy to change dimensions you know. Coupled with effect of the first stages of handing my life over to you. He muttered the last part to himself so as to not worry the boy before he continued while looking through the boy's memories. Huh. Looks like there's some pretty powerful being on this planet from what your first encounter was like and that green one truly impresses me in how he managed to sense you through your jutsu but luckily that won't be a problem in here. The fox finished only to see the confused expression written all over his container's face, so it was with an overly loud sigh that the fox continued. Sigh. Why am I not surprised at all, have you even tried to sensing anything since you were trapped in this room? The demon asked in a know-it-all tone which served its purpose in pissing the blonde off before the boy pouted to himself as he tried sensing for anything but was surprised when he wasn't able to sense anything outside of what would become the white-out room. Seeing the surprised look on his container's face the fox once again began to talk. You were correct in assuming that this place was similar to your old training ground behind the waterfall in our home world Naruto. This because this place is exactly the same only it was built for accommodating people as well by the looks of things. The fox stated as he looked out of his container's eyes straight at the buildings ahead of him. As Naruto began to walk towards the building he replied. Yeah, but did they really have to make it all white? I mean I can understand that looking at white for a long period of time could force your strength in mentally to grow or cause you to go insane but why couldn't they have made it a better color, like orange? which caused the fox to snort in disgust before he smirked evilly before he said. Maybe you're right and it is for training. The fox paused to see the look of agreement on his container's face before he continued. Or maybe they just wanted to with you. The fox cried out before laughing his ass off at the look of pure horror that crossed Naruto's face. Flashback end. Naruto remembered it all with a fond smile on his face before shaking his head not believing that he had been so gullible to at least for a second believe what the fox had told him. It had been something that the fox had trained him in extensively over the past two years and Naruto had been incredibly powerful because of his training although for a short while after the training Naruto had become afraid of the color white but he was over that or so he thought. Naruto then thought about the rest of the training and how powerful he had become. Naruto had complete control over the Nine Tails Chakra before he even started so there was no problem with his first evolution as he called it. From there he kind of just gained more and more power from the fox over the course of the next year and a half as well as becoming attuned to it. During the time the fox had been alive the boy had learned many things such as cooking, cleaning, how to play shogi and he even learned how to play a few different instruments that were laying around alongside the added nin and taijutsu training. He still couldn't do anything with genjutsu nor did he really want to but it was now practically impossible to trick Naruto. All with shadow clones of course but of course, he still learned them. The boy also learned a lot about meditation and was now a lot less hyperactive, most of the time. But the biggest surprise for Naruto was what had happened after Naruto had got hold of the full power of the Kyubi for it was just as the Kyubi had predicted. 
Instead of just gaining nine tails our blonde hero gained ten and with them immense power that he guessed the ten tails would have had but it didn't stop there as it seemed that Naruto was currently holding back as much of the power he could in an effort to make sure the power didn't just overwhelm him completely. It seemed that the full power of a demon king plus that of his own was too much for any human body to hold inside itself and slowly but surely that darkness took hold of him again and this time when he awoke he was sure to never be the same. Flashback when Naruto had woken up he looked at the calendar from the spot where he laid and saw that it was a whole week since he had, been knocked out due to the pain of containing all that power and as Naruto was thinking about how the hell he was still alive he began to subconsciously scratch the back of his head with his, tail. Why the, do I have a tail, Naruto mentally screamed at himself before he remembered what the fox had told him. Flashback within a flashback, Naruto, shut up for a moment and listen to me oh. K. The demon had yelled to get his container's attention and when he did he began to talk once more. I have been thinking a lot about what will happen to you after you gain my full power and the results are not what you would think would be in your favor. You mean I could die, as he was suddenly paying a lot more attention to the important conversation. Not could but will at least as your human self anyway. The Kyubi replied in an uninfused manner which did not carry the hidden worry he had for the boy he thought as his own kit. What do you mean? asked naruto in a slightly scared manner i mean that there is two possible outcomes that i can see and those are that either you simply die and that's the end of it the kyubi paused to let that hit home with the boy before he continued the other thing that could happen is that your human body die but your demon soul doesn't and over the course of roughly a week it will create you a new body a demon's body back to the original flashback I know Kurama then went on to say that I wouldn't look too different as the body would be formed with the basis of his old one but this still blew his mind. He got up and looked in the mirror to see what changes had been made to his appearance and was glad to see that he wasn't completely covered in fur from head to toe as the Kyubi had said might happen. No Naruto had changed from his old 5 feet, 8 inches self into a much taller 6 feet, 5 inches tall. But that was not all that had changed as the man's blonde hair had become even more rugged than normal and had traces of red running all through it as its length now flowed down to just below his shoulders in an untamed fashion. His pupils were now slit and blood red which contrasted against his pitch black eyes. His six whiskers had become more pronounced and gave him an even more feral look alongside the longer and sharper canines of course. His ears were slightly pointed at the end and his face showed no baby fat at all and was chiseled out quite well. He noticed the small scar on the bottom of his chin that he had obtained during the war and looked down further to find that he now had a body that would send any female hurtling back and suffer a severe amount of blood loss as well as claws on both hands and feet that would make it hard for him to wear any kind of shoes or socks for that manner. He also noticed that all his original scars were there including the one over his heart and the one on the opposite side showing that he had been impaled. He looked on at all those scars individually as he remembered how he had got each one and discovered that he was thankful he still had them as it reminded him that even though he was now what he had been trying to prove he wasn't all his life, he could still be hurt he still act and play around like a human would, he wasn't a mindless killing machine no he was still Naruto. The next half year he had spent getting used to his new power which he could safely say was on board with the one he had seen that was around his own age, maybe even more so from the short bit of training that he had done for the last week and a half to see if he could push that boundary and was happy to see that he could. Flashback end. Naruto had then decided that it was time to leave as he could always come back to train later besides he really wanted to see what the world he was going to protect was like and he had to keep his promise with Piccolo. I wonder if he kept his side of the promise, Naruto thought to himself before he deadpanned as he remembered that Piccolo had never promised him anything. Naruto then thought about a possible other reason but decided it couldn't be because he was still scared of the color white and that he was just overthinking things oh the irony. Naruto then focused back on what he was doing, flying through the sky in the direction of Satan City. Sure Naruto didn't have the same energy as the rest of this planet had from what he could detect but he was not going to let that hinder him so in the first few weeks of his training he had some of his clones work on a way that he too could fly and he had come up with something amazing. Naruto had used his affinity for wind to his advantage and can now manipulate it so well he can make the very air around him obey his command and carry him through the air at an alarming speed. Naruto was now on his way to Satan City because he knew that the world's savoir 
would be there and he wished to talk with him. Naruto knows that the Savoir of Earth is the boy his age as he is the most powerful being on Earth from what he could detect, and asked him about his thoughts on this planet and life in general as he thought it would be good to talk to a kid his age once more. As Naruto flew toward Satan City he smiled as the last words from his predecessor echoed in his head. What he liked being tall damn it. He then began a slow, normal human, paced walk towards the city. Only an idiot would go any faster than a civilian in front of them, he thought with a laugh, if only he knew. As Naruto walked down the side of a country road that headed towards Satan City he began to get lost in the tranquility of the countryside. That is until he saw something heading straight for him. He managed to dodge out of the way without showing any more power than he had been but he cursed himself for not paying attention. He then noticed a flying, he didn't know what it was. But he knew that there was a girl inside of it that seemed to be in command. Remember although Naruto has been living in the DBZ world two years now he never really got to see the civilization of today, so he wasn't worried but as he looked back at the thing that almost hit him he saw that the flying thingy appeared to be chasing it and when he felt a familiar energy signature fly above him he began to get worried so he decided since it worked before why wouldn't work now as he used his transparency jutsu in order to stay out of sight while he masked the power he used to catch up to gohan and whatever those things he was chasing were another thing he learned from his predecessor when Naruto caught up he noticed with a deadpanned expression on his face that the thing that almost hit him was about to rocket off the of a cliff and was about to go help the people he saw inside when he saw what could only be described as the ugliest outfit Naruto had ever seen in his life and couldn't stop himself from laughing outright. Luckily he was in the middle of the countryside with no one around as he didn't want people to start up rumors about the countryside ghost. Luckily for everyone there while Naruto was too busy laughing his ass off to save the day. Gohan wasn't and flew down the cliff to do just that. By the time Gohan had brought the, he didn't know what to call it, back up to the top of the cliff Naruto had finally been able to get a hold on himself and decided to get close enough for him to hear what everyone was saying. As Gohan and the others came in to view for the blonde he took notice to the three odd looking people that were tied up by what seemed to be rope. The first person Naruto saw was a giant of that made Naruto rethink his choice in height as he thought about this he continued to survey the, big man as he had labeled him. As well as being tall this man was quite muscly as well, he wore a WW white singlet which showed off his hulking figure. He wore a yellow bandana on top of his head and had brown pants and a pair of black boots on. The second figure was around his own height which made him think more on changing his height just a tad. What he was seriously height conscious, it's what happens when you're the shrimp of your academy class. The guy had long jet black hair that went down to the bottom of his neck, he wore a purple suit and a lighter purple dress pants with black shoes. The third figure made Naruto feel better about himself as this guy would be struggling to get past just over 5 feet let alone 6. He was wearing a strange hat that made him look like a chicken as his face was covered with something that reminded Naruto of the hospital. He had a red vest over a yellow long sleeved t-shirt, blue pants and brown shoes. Common crooks, Naruto guessed correctly before he turned his attention back to the group of elderly which were cheering for Gohan and the girl Naruto had seen controlling the flying thingy. Naruto then heard Gohan say some stupid lines that made him almost wet himself but he managed to hold it in before seeing, the great Saiyan man, fly off into the distance. Naruto then decided to stay and watch the crooks so they didn't do anything stupid, which 10 minutes later they did. The man wearing the purple suit managed to sneak a knife out of his pocket when no one was looking. No one but Naruto of course, so as soon as the man had pulled it out Naruto was on it in a flash as he hit the man, softly, on the wrist causing the man to drop the knife and cry out in pain at his now broken wrist. His cries alerted the girl from earlier as she looked over and saw the knife on the ground, her face full of shock and surprise. She then quickly ran over and kicked the knife away and then searched the men for anything else they might have on them and thankfully coming out with nothing more. Time passed and eventually people came to pick up the crooks and elderly without further incident, Naruto then once again headed for Satan City as he followed the energy signature that Gohan was giving off once again at a slow pace once more but this time he would be sure to pay more attention to what's ahead of him and around him as he cancelled his jutsu once no one was around. When Naruto had finally arrived at Satan City at around about lunchtime he awe stuck as he looked around and saw giant buildings everywhere, building that were easily taller than even the Hokage Tower back in his home world. 
Sure Naruto had seen a few small villages on his way here but they were just that, small village and nothing more at least not like this. He looked up at a sign saying, cars for sale, with a smaller version of what had almost hit him earlier, he then noticed just how many people there were driving these, cars, as they put it. Another thing he noticed was the huge sign saying, Satan, city with an ugly man's face put up next to it. While Naruto was wondering why such an ugly man would be presented on the sign that introduced to its city he finally saw what made him break out laughing until it became painful. The sign had said. The savior of our world Naruto took another look at the behemoth of a man and noticed his Y pose and decided it had to be a hoax as there was no way anyone would believe such a weak man could truly save the world. Oh how wrong he was. Naruto then continued to walk around the city with an awestruck face in the vague direction of Gohan's location until he spotted something that almost made his heart stop. It was something Naruto had been deprived of for three long years from being in a place that only had the basics for two years while being in a war for the other. This day Naruto began to think that he had been blessed by Kami-sama himself as he walked into a small shop named Holy's Ramen. But Naruto paid no mind to the S at the end as he walked into the ramen stand that was surely a gift from God. As soon as the blonde entered the stand he fell into a comatose state as he smelled what he had been waiting for three long years of pain and suffering to smell and as he walked up to the counter he couldn't help the dreamy expression on his face which of course the lady serving a counter took for something else entirely, that is until. See something you like? The lady behind the desk asked a little too sweetly as everyone else looked over at the two in anticipation for what was about to down as they were all sure that the boy was going to get a beat down. But it was not to be as Naruto replied. Yeah, he paused as the lady was readying a punch in anticipation for what was surely to come. Ramen. The boy finished only to be smashed across the face by the lady's fist before she even took notice to what he had just said. When she did eventually realize she looked as white as a ghost before she jumped over the counter and ran to the surely injured boy's aid but when she arrived she was shocked to not only see a not only uninjured boy but a pissed off one too. What the hell lady? Naruto yelled at the lady who had punched him in the face before the lady after getting over her shock replied. I'm sorry I mean I didn't mean to hit you, I mean I did but, air, I only hit you because I thought you were trying to hit on me. She said the last part rather shyly but of course Naruto being Naruto meant that something bad was about to happen and sure enough. Well that was stupid, why would I do that? Naruto asked questionably before he remembered Kurama's crash course on what not to say to a woman and was about to apologize to the woman when he looked up at her again and realized that he was too late as he felt the pure killing intent of a woman scorned. As far as the woman was concerned this boy had just called her both stupid and ugly and there was going to be hell to pay. Naruto lasted another three seconds before he was on the ground crying his eyes out as even though regular hits to his body would probably hurt her more than it would him but she didn't hit him in any regular spot. Know this woman, this demon, and that's saying something from Naruto's point of view. He hit him where no true man stands a chance. She had cracked his prized jewels hard enough to put a normal man in the hospital for weeks with a 100% of no babies to come. Fortunately for Naruto he was a demon and caused heal what most would in weeks in a few minutes and would still be able to have children. Didn't mean those minutes are any more painful though, thought Naruto as every man within a mile radius suddenly covered their own jewels as an ominous feeling took over as the mankind had met its match. After a few minutes of hell Naruto finally managed to get up before he walked over to the counter and sat down once again only to be faced by a smirking woman who he finally actually looked at and noticed while she looked like she had been around for a while she still looked quite beautiful. She had long blonde hair which seemed to flow down to the bottom of her shoulders in an almost graceful manner. Her eyes were a deep blue much like his eyes, hanged version. She was sporting an apron other what appeared to be. A dress which really confused Naruto as he wondered why you would wear a dress under an apron but held his tongue this time as he wasn't looking for another kick to his jewels today or any day for that matter he then spied the name on her name tag which seemed to be positions at the tip of her C cup S and Naruto wondered again why she would do such a thing if she didn't want attention but chalked it up to women being crazy and wisely left it at that. Sorry for before, holy is it? The blonde apologized sincerely which caused the woman to smile back before replying. Yes, yes it is and may I ask your name, she said sweetly. Sure it's Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki, he replied in a prideful manner which the woman giggled at before asking for his order only for her eyes to turn into dollar signs a moment later while leaving the boy wondering yet again. 
Why does this happen at every ramen stand I go to? Naruto thought in despair. Thirteen bulls later and Naruto was pulling out his wallet as he suddenly realized that his money would probably be different from the money they had in this world so with a sigh he pulled out a hand full of notes only for the lady's eyes to widen in surprise as he pulled out enough money just in his hand for her and her daughter to go on a shopping spree with and that was saying something. She then wondered why this boy would ask her how much money was in his hands before she asked. You do know that each of those notes in your hands are worth $100 right? She received a shake of the head as an answer and sighed before explaining to the boy about all the different notes that he had on his possession as he realized that every note he had seemed to be worth about ten times as much here. So it was with a joyful smile that he handed the appropriate amount of money over to the nice lady before he exited the stand after telling her that he would be back soon but not before the woman behind the counter asked him to watch out for her daughter and when he asked for her name he was given Eresa. It was now around 2.30 pm and so Naruto decided it would be best if he found the true hero of this world as soon as possible so he began to run at a civilian speed in the direction of Gohan's energy signature and eventually came across a bunch of building put together called Orange Star High School as memories of his not so fond times in the academy back home, back in his old home. This was his home now. He then began to walk into the school that would surely change his life but was it for better or worse? As Naruto walked in through the front door of the school he wondered what it would be like without kids who were told you were the devil reincarnated or if the teachers didn't constantly hinder his education. Yes Naruto was mulling over the idea of attending this school just to see what it was like and besides Gohan went here and he wanted to talk to him anyways. Naruto continued through the school as he followed Gohan's energy signature all the while not seeing a soul in sight. Another thing that was pissing Naruto off was the never-ending corridors that would branch off to the sides making Naruto think that he would definitely get lost if he didn't have an energy source to give him a rough indication of where he needed to go, though he still managed at least a few times. After what seemed like hours to Naruto he finally came across the room he was looking for. But then he came across a serious problem as he thought. How the hell should I go about entering? This was a big change from his earlier days and it proved he was becoming more mature, that was until. I know I'll knock, he thought before without consciously keeping his power down to a civilian's level he knocked, softly, on the door. This of course led to the door falling off its hinges while he just stood there with his arm at mid-swing with a stupid look on his face. When he finally got his sense back he realized everyone's eyes were on him, some more serious than other, cough. Vital. Cough. Gohan. While others looked at him with a dreamy expression on their faces, all the girls in the room other than Vital. He decided to do the smart thing and pick up the door and put it off to the side for the moment before he turned to face the class with a sheepish expression all the while thinking how much of an idiot he was as well as trying to come up with a lie but thankfully he didn't need to as the teacher had already done it for him. Hmm well that's odd, I guess the hinges were little use, the teacher said before all the men in the room nodded their heads in agreement while the girls hadn't even been listening to him. Naruto simply scratched the back of his head with a sheepish grin on his face as he couldn't believe his luck. Yeah, that must have been it, Naruto stated as his eyes began to wander around the room until he hit Gohan and continued. Anyway the reason I came here was I need a quick word with Gohan if that's alright with you mister. Mr. Smith and since you have already gone and disrupted my class one suppose that would be alright, the teacher responded before he turned and faced his class and told them all why the young man was here which caused some confusion as everyone wondered what someone like the blonde in front of them would want anything to do with the class nerd. As Gohan walked down the stairs towards the blonde, Naruto noticed that he seemed to be rather tense and secretly wondered if he was really so out of practice that he would let his emotions show like that. Even Naruto could be serious when he wanted to be, as long as there's not a door involved. Naruto then let his eyes wander to the blonde girl that Gohan had been sitting beside and thought she looked quite beautiful and for some reason she reminded him of someone that he couldn't quite place. Then it hit him and as he concentrated on finding her energy he found it was very similar to the woman he had just met in the ramen bar. This was all the incentive Naruto needed before he called out to her. Hey your name wouldn't happen to be Eresa would it? before all the women in the room were suddenly giving off death glares in her direction as she herself had a slight tinge of pink on her cheeks as she wondered where the stud had heard her name. Yes, my name is Eresa but how do you know that, she said rather hastily as everyone tuned in to hear his answer. Ha ha well you see I kind of meet your mother and she told me that if I saw you that I was to make sure you weren't doing anything stupid or silly, 
Naruto said with a reminiscent look on his face before his hands subconsciously covered his jewels but luckily no one saw it apart from Eresa who decided to get back at the boy for embarrassing her in front of the entire class. She kicked you in the balls huh? With a knowing look which released a storm of laughter from the men and a look that spelled disaster for her mother from the girls but she didn't really care as she knew that her mom could handle any of them with ease. Naruto in turn had the decency to look sheepish before he gave one of his fox-like grins which caused the girls to fawn before he replied. Yeah, yeah she did do that alongside crack me in the face for something I didn't do but I'm sure you'll be able to discuss this with her when you get home but anyway I'm getting sidetracked, I'll see you later Eresa with a smile straight at her which caused her heart to flutter just a bit. Oh when she got home she was sure to get all the gossip on this boy whatever his name was. Anyway I have to talk to Gohan now so see you later, oh and before I forget the names Naruto. He said before walking outside the classroom with Gohan hot on his tail. Once the two had made it a good distance away from the classroom Gohan rudely said. What are you? With a dangerous tone which to his annoyance Naruto just shrugged it off before he replied in a cheeky manner which only served to piss the now serious man off more. You know I believe it's common courtesy for one to introduce oneself before asking another, when Naruto felt Gohan's killer intent he replied with his own, drowning out Gohan's attempt at scaring him while making the boy flinch ever so slightly, it was enough though however for Naruto to notice it as he let out a predator's smirk in victory before he commented in a nonchalant manner. You know for a world savior, you sure out of practice ah, only to see a surprised look on Gohan's face as the boy tried to instantly deny Naruto's statement with stuttered excuses but Naruto quickly shut him up with a slight rise in his ki before telling the boy. I will talk to you later about how I know and also a few other things that have occurred to me over our less than impressive meeting. Naruto stopped for a moment as if trying to sense something before nodding to himself and said. Meet me at the place the one you call Piccolo resides at Sunfall before walking away away from Gohan while thinking he might stop by that ramen stand before he had meet Piccolo for the first time in two years as well as give his ultimatum to the boy who was supposedly keeping this planet safe. XXXXXXXXXXX it was roughly 20 minutes before sunfall. When he had arrived at the platform in the sky, which interested Naruto quite a bit, he was meet by three strange people. You all know what Piccolo, Dend and Mr. Popo look like and was quite startled at seeing a shorter and more joyful version of Piccolo as well as a fat man that seemed to have a skin tone darker than his own real eyes but he managed to put his interest in the matter to the side for now before with a cheeky smirk he said. It has been a while hasn't it Mr. Green Coon? Which caused Piccolo to snort in annoyance as the little green one and the pure black tubby one both stifled a laugh before they heard something that they would have never believed if they had never heard it for themselves. It most certainly has, Whisker, Piccolo retorted while leaving two gobsmacked people in his wake as they had never heard Piccolo in this manner. Dend and Mr. Popo both knew about Naruto from Piccolo and were now wondering just how familiar those two really are. This however only succeed in serving to boost Naruto's smirk into a full-blown grin and he was about to speak up when they all heard a laugh that came their left as they looked over and saw Gohan standing there laughing to himself before he said. Boy Piccolo, I don't think even I have ever seen you do that before his voice full of mirth before it turned serious as he continued. But now comes the part where you, he said while pointing to Naruto. Explain to me what you are, where you came from and when and how you got here, but all Gohan got in return was a deep sounding laugh which pissed the boy off once again. Well at least you're honest and straight to the point although I did think you would be a little bit more polite even if I am an unknown hostile at the moment. Still it is always right to introduce oneself before asking questions, especially when you are talking to someone currently stronger than what you are, Naruto said. The last part in particular catching everyone's attention as a wave of silence enveloped the lookout as his words truly hit home. Before they could say anything in response however he added. But before we argue about who truly is the strongest on this planet, Naruto had meet up with Piccolo once during his training with the use of a shadow clone and found out that in this dimension at least there were multiple worlds out there in space. Let me listen to your story and when you are done I will tell you my own, deal?" Naruto offered with his hand raised in a token of friendship as he tried to hide the pain he was feeling as he still hadn't quite got over all that had happened in his life and luckily only Piccolo and surprisingly Mr. Popo were able to notice his internal struggle but both decided to keep quiet about it for now. 
After a few moments where Gohan just stared at Naruto he finally let out a small smile as he sensed no deceit from the man in front of him yet somehow managed to miss the well-hidden pain. Very well, Gohan said as he shook Naruto's hand before continuing with a smile on his face. Although I would like to at least know the name of the person I am about to tell my life story to. To which Naruto forced a smile before he replied, Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki before he paused as his features turned a little darker before he continued. Although telling each other our life stories is not the only thing I wish to talk to you about, which caused Gohan to frown as everyone else listened in to what the blonde had to say. And what would that be? asked Gohan in a questioning manner but soon after he wished he hadn't. Simple, Naruto paused. I wish to talk about your resignation as this world's protector, he finished as all went quiet. W-H-A-A-A-T screamed gohan in utter outrage as he looked at naruto with utter hatred in his eyes while everyone else had their eyes wide open in shock although piccolo did have a knowing look after the shock had passed and why would we discuss something like that gohan yelled once again not believing what he was hearing cause after all he had saved this world once why would he say such things especially since he was the most powerful being on this planet or so he thought and his anger only seemed to rise until there are many reasons why you must resign for now However I did say that I wanted to talk to you about this after we tell each other of our pasts and by then who knows I might even change my mind, although I doubt it, Naruto said the last part in a whisper that only Piccolo could hear and when he did a sad smile crossed the Namekian's face as he knew the blonde's reasoning or at least he thought he knew because although he had never heard directly what happened in Naruto's past he could tell that it was not a happy one, that much was obvious. When Gohan finally gained full control of himself a few seconds later he decided that he should go first and began his life story. Gohan told Naruto about the Saiyan who was once known as Raditz before he was killed along with his father by Piccolo's SPEACAL beam cannon and as Naruto looked over he could see the look of regret that Piccolo now sported before he turned back to what Gohan was saying. Gohan then told Naruto about his training trip with Piccolo which Gohan had said was more like a trip to hell and back which caused Naruto to laugh as well as increasing the mood if just a little. He then told him about his dad's resurrection as well as the death of most of his friends with a sad smile on his face before he went on to his trip to Namek in which he met Donde as well as the facing of Frieza and the resurrection of his friends who had died both on earth and Namek alike after his dad had gone super saiyan for the first time and defeated Frieza or so they had thought. He then went on to talk about the return of Frieza as well as his father on planet earth only for a new mysterious warrior who appeared to be a super saiyan to show up and defeat them which confused Naruto as he was told earlier about there being only a small amount of saiyans left in this universe which intrigued Naruto as he wondered what happened and if they could in some way connect with him due to them both losing so much. Gohan then told Naruto all about the time traveler which only seemed to interest Naruto further because although he had traveled dimensions even he had not traveled through time. He then went on to tell Naruto of his father's return and the whole android thingy a few years later before his meeting with Cell and him going mad with power which meant his dad died saving the world only for it to be a false victory before Gohan finally defeated Cell once and for all. Gohan then went on to talk about the last seven years of his life like Goku refusing to come back to life because he thought he caused too much harm to earth when he was alive which Naruto frowned while thinking that the man was a bit of an for ditching his family when he could have come back to them as he knew how hard life could be without a father or a husband for that matter while remembering about Kurinai sensei after she lost Asuma. Naruto almost broke out laughing when he heard how Krillin and 18 got together. Well you certainly have had an extraordinary life so far although you have had to deal with quite a bit of pain during that time however I can safely say that yours has been less painful than my own, Naruto said gaining everyone's attention before he continued. And although I completely disagree with your father's actions I can understand his reasoning even if I still am completely against it, he said getting raised eyebrows from everyone before a generally curious Gohan asked him why. Because if you are dead you may take away the chance of enemies attacking but it is very unlikely and when you are dead you cannot truly protect what is most important. I have been an orphan all my life and know from my own experiences as well as others that a life without even one parent of without a husband is made extremely hard at times and there is a lot of self doubt that stems from this but what really pisses me off is the fact that he doesn't have to be dead and he could come back and look after his family especially one who he has never met. He may think he is protecting you but I can tell from the look of pain in your eyes that all he has done by not coming back is cause exactly that, pain, 
Naruto finished his speech while looking straight into Gohan's eyes with a sad knowing smile on his face. Everything was quiet for a while before Gohan finally broke it by thanking Naruto who turned his smile into a happy one before he waved him off and began talking of his own life, all of it which had never done before but he decided to be completely and utterly truthful right from the moment he was born just as Gohan had been. Naruto started off by telling them that he was from a different dimension which got a range of different responses from a look of seriousness, Piccolo, to being slack-jawed. He then went on to tell them about his homeworld before they could ask questions about his travel through the dimensions and how or why he did it. He told them about all of the nations in his old world and gave brief descriptions about each one as well as a few of his own accounts. Then came his life story and as he began a blind man could see, he was nervous before he began. He told them all about his childhood or at least what he could remember of it as he didn't really want to. He told them all about the beatings the stares and hatred he had to put up with during his early years despite the leader of the village looking after him he told them that at the time he hadn't known why he was so much more hated than any other kid in all of konoha he told them about getting kicked out of the orphanage at age four before he lived in a dumpster for half a year before his Gigi found him and gave him a rundown apartment where he would spend the rest of his life in that world living he then went on to tell everyone how happy he was when he first entered the ninja academy as he thought that maybe he would be hated less, he was wrong. Aside from being purposely held back by the teachers he was still hated. He went on to explain the real reason his favorite food was ramen and that was simply because it was the only food he could get as he had befriended the owner and his daughter. He failed the exam three times but explained to them about the Mizuki incident and how he had found out about his tenant which shocked them all before he told them about finding his fourth precious person in Uruka. He then went on to the team selections and how his team managed to pass Kakashi's test although he admits that they never should have. He then went on to explain his missions such as the wave mission before the Chunin exams and Orochimaru. Then he talked about how he and Pervy Sage had got the next Hokage and the defection of his one-time brother. Then onto his training trip and his rescuing of Gara before moving on to his sage training and the battle with pain in which everyone was impressed. The meeting with his dad and later with his mother as he took control of the demon inside him, once again impressing everyone, before he moved on to finding out about the war before he himself entered the Shinigami's new playground. He explained with great detail the pain he felt as he saw all his friends die in front of him as he could do nothing about it. Then he explained how he had arrived here in this new world and how he had trained with the fox in his stomach that he thought of as his second father before he explained his transformation while he got weird looks from everyone as it didn't seem like it before he explained that he was currently wearing a solid genjutsu to cover it all up. Before we move on, Piccolo paused to give everyone time to face him before he continued. Can we please see your true self as it would be beneficial to our trust as well as future troubles if we knew what you really look like? while putting extra emphasis on the, you. Very well, Naruto replied coolly before he transformed into a much more demonic version of Naruto who was now as tall as Piccolo. See description in chapter 3. Everyone was so astounded by Naruto's transformation that they just stood there in silence for a good few minutes before Gohan finally broke out of his stupor and spoke up. Wow, I must admit I never thought that the transformation would change you so much, while inwardly thinking how good the former blue-eyed boy looked in front of him as he was thinking about how cool it would be to have his own before he remembered what Naruto's life had been like and quickly tossed that idea out the window. So, on to the next topic, Naruto said, why don't you think I am ready to be this world's defense? Which caused Naruto to gain a serious look of his own before he replied. I didn't say anything about you not being ready to defend although that is true, Naruto paused as Gohan hissed in anger before he continued. What I did say and still think is true I might add, is that you are not currently fit to protect this world. Oh and why is that? Gohan replied with a hint of venom as a little bit of his Saiyan blood started to flow. Naruto just stared at him for a little while as if contemplating exactly how he was going to answer. Simple, Naruto paused in order to build up the suspense as his prankster side kicked in. My evaluation said so, there was a sudden silence before everyone suddenly sweat dropped. You can't be serious, Gohan screamed once he got over his sweat drop, he just couldn't believe that after all that build up Naruto destroyed it in one sentence. A bit like how dad used to, thought Gohan sadly before he once again he turned to look at Naruto or at least what he thought was Naruto as he saw him disappear in a cloud of smoke with a resound, puff, 
and when the smoke finally dispersed he was greeted by the sight of nothing but a paper sheet that flew directly into his face before he picked off and began to read. Ha ha bet you didn't see that coming. Yes that person you just talked to was in fact just a clone but don't worry, I now know about everything that went on during our heartfelt talk and besides I had better things to do than talk about such sad matters, like ramen. P.S. I will now be attending your school so if you want to talk that would be the place. Also a little hint. Maybe you should start getting into shape again you were looking a little weak. P.S.S. Try not to screw things up with Vital, Gohan. Just grew more and more perplexed as he continued to read the letter in front of him until he hit the part about Vital and began to stammer and blush a red that Hinata could be proud of which earned him a curious look from all those around him until he heard what sounded like a camera flash and another puff of smoke as he just stood there while his mind tried to figure out what was going on until he realized that he had been made a fool of and as he turned the note over he saw the word. Just one of the many things you need to work on. This only served to piss Gohan off further as he promised himself that he would get back at the blonde annoyance. XXXXXXXX The next day as Naruto exited his new favorite ramen stand waving goodbye to erase his mum he was wondering to himself what high school would actually be like as he imagined it would be much different to the academy back from when he was trying to become a ninja. He had to keep reminding himself that everyone on this planet was a civilian or at least most of them as he remembered all those who were a part of the Z fighters before he openly laughed while remembering that particular name. Naruto then looked down at the orange star badge he had been given so that people would recognize what school he went to and although Naruto didn't really like the badge he was thankful that unlike some of the other students that went to other high schools he didn't need to wear some crappy uniform. He then remembered how Gohan's outfit looked like it was picked by his mom, if only he knew and that Gohan would actually better off if he wore a uniform. When Naruto did finally arrive he found that he must have been early or late since no one seemed to be around. He decided to go to the front desk to find out where he should be going but when he arrived there was no one there either. This pissed Naruto off and it was only thanks to the wondering janitor that he found out that there was no school on a Saturday because of something called the weekend. The whole concept confused him as he simply didn't get why there would be days off and could only assume that this world was a lot more relaxed than his. Meaning the amount of work they put into anything in general. So Naruto did the thing that he was sure any sane person would do when they had time to spare other than training of course. He went back to the ramen stand, only to be surprised by the new worker with hair just as blonde as his own. When Naruto finally did return he was introduced to the sight of the girl who he remembered from his trip to fetch Gohan. He then remembered how she was the daughter of this stand's owner and her name was Eresa so it was without hesitation that he called out a hello to her as he sat at one of the counter stools. When Eresa heard her name being called she turned around to face the boy, no, man that see me at school the day before and so she let out a surprised yelp as she did not expect to see him at her job of all places before she remembered that the whole reason their conversation even started up at school was because he had already met her mother. Once she finally regathered herself she let a smile cross her face as she took his order only to receive an order that would forever haunt her as she soon watched the blonde man stuff his face in such an animalistic way it would put Kiba to shame. She was continually amazed by just how much ramen one man could eat as the guy moved into goddamn double digits. When he finally did stop he released a burp any man could be proud of before turning to the blonde in front of him with a cheeky smirk that reminded the girl of a fox. So, you work here often Eresa? Naruto asked her quietly as to not make a fuss. Eresa just stood there for a while, still lost in thought over how it was possible for one man to eat so much when she suddenly noticed Naruto staring at her expectantly. She blushed in embarrassment before she quickly asked to repeat what he had just asked, albeit a little shakily. Once he responded she quickly told him that she was just covering for her mother at the moment and only really worked at the stand whenever her mother needed an extra hand. Once the introductions were done they eventually moved on to a friendlier conversation. Eresa constantly talked while Naruto was just trying to make it look like he was listening. And before long they found several similarities between the two whenever Naruto actually tuned in. After a while of mindless banter the two split ways as Naruto left to go home but not without leaving Eresa with a slightly sad expression or in returning of a mother who now had black male material, of her own daughter but still, she liked to have all the cards damn it. Once Naruto left he decided that he may as well fit some training into the end of his day and decided to shoot off into the woods while unconsciously going in the opposite direction from his old training grounds, it wasn't like he was still scared of the color white or anything. 
Once Naruto had found a suitable area in which he could train he landed on the ground with a soft gracefulness that showed his skill in flying as he didn't make a sound. He then put on his gravity weights with a spark of chakra which caused him to nearly fall over before he began a training routine that he had, borrowed, from Guy and Lee. The only change was the heavier weights and added sequences. Instead of 100 punches he chooses to double it as he did everything else. After the warm-up Naruto then went on to perfecting any techniques he had that wouldn't cause mass destruction to the world he was currently protecting which if he was honest with himself wasn't a terrible amount. Two hours later he noticed that somehow the sun had completely gone down without him noticing so he walked over to the nearest tree that had big enough branches to take his mass and jumped onto one of them but before he went to sleep he quickly went into his lowest demonic powered form outside of his real appearance and dozed off while thinking if he could hold this form while he was asleep then he would truly be able to hold it anywhere especially since he was currently still experiencing nightmares that simply did not want to leave him alone when naruto woke up the next day he would repeat much of what he did before as well as properly get ready for the fun time he would have at this school he was going to be attending. Naruto woke up with a start as sweat seemed to cascade down from his face. Another nightmare. The full-fledged demon thought with a tired sigh as he slowly began to stand up and stretch his legs. He didn't know why but lately he had been having a different kind of nightmare as it seemed to switch from him being surrounded by his dying friends asking him why he hadn't saved them into his new home being swallowed whole by a sea of pink of all colors. He sighed again while momentarily thinking that he had too much ramen yesterday before he quickly binned that idea as there couldn't possibly be a thing as too much ramen as surely the gods wouldn't allow it. Once he had nodded his head and agreed with himself, he quickly remembered that today would finally be his first at high school or whatever the hell these people called it as it didn't really matter to him. Before he could start agreeing with himself again he quickly began his journey to what would surely be a fun first day at school, right? When Naruto finally arrived he cursed to himself as he found that he was surrounded by a sea of orange star students. Since Naruto still couldn't use his powers he decided to make a distraction by tapping his foot against the ground in order to make a miniature earthquake while making sure it wasn't big enough to cause any harm. When he noticed everyone in a panic he quickly realized his mistake however as everyone seemed to decide that running around like headless chickens would keep them alive. After another few minutes of avoiding the chickens he finally reached the main office where he noticed the receptionist was still hiding under her desk. Yup it was official, he would never make a low grade earthquake in a populated area ever again. Another few minutes passed before the receptionist rose back to her seat and blushed when she saw that someone had seen her act so cowardly, only for her blush to increase when she noticed just how handsome that person was. Her 30-year-old mind went to work as she soon gained a dreamy face before it diminished thanks to a quick cough from Naruto. So, what can I do for you boy? The receptionist said in a very sultry tone that started a fire in Naruto's demonic heart. He however stood his ground as he did not want to become a mindless beast, yet. Naruto visibly gulped as he was forced to view of the woman's sizable DD cup bust as her tight shirt revealed much to the youthful teen. It certainly didn't help that the lady's luscious dark brown hair seemed to roll down her shoulders before meeting the sides of her ever bountiful s. I, I, I'm, um, I'm here for my, air, schedule, Naruto got out in a somewhat squeaky voice as even though he's a demon he really hasn't ever been in a situation quite like this one. The receptionist smirked evilly while thinking she'd won before she spoke up again. Sure you can boy, why don't you just come around back and I can give IT to you she said while keeping her sultry tone of voice. Naruto was now in a serious struggle with himself as he had to focus his entire will against just jumping over the desk in front of him and penetrate the woman so hard she wouldn't be able to walk for weeks let alone days. Just before Naruto could respond however the two were stopped from what they were doing as Arasa walked up behind Naruto while noticing the angle of the receptionist's bust with a scowl on her face. Naruto, I thought I'd find you here. Arasa said in an overly cheerful voice that spoke death to the all those that listened. Naruto quickly went about mentally thanking Arasa in his head as he was sure that if her distraction didn't show up right when it did he would have almost certainly got expelled from the school on his first day for inappropriate behavior involving the school's needy main receptionist. The receptionist scowled however as she knew how close she had just been to getting the ride of her life. If you listened to his words you would think him to be an everyday student but she hadn't been focusing on his words, no she had been focusing on his eyes, the eyes of a beast. Those eyes that told her that she was about to be dominated, 
those eyes of his that made her wet just thinking about them. But it was all taken away thanks to that blonde haired bimbo, the receptionist thought as she noticed the eyes of a beast become more and more ordinary. Have you got your schedule yet? I wanted to compare yours to my own and see if we have many classes together. Eresa questioned while keeping her all to sweet tone of voice while she glared at the receptionist lady. Naruto could have sworn he saw electricity in the air when he had noticed that the receptionist started to glare back at the blonde haired female with an equal intensity. I was just about to get it, Naruto replied to Erase's question while trying to defuse the situation a little bit. It didn't work, however, as the tension remained until Erase looked at a clock on the wall and realized that it was almost time for class. Well, then hurry up, it's almost time for class, Erase stated demanded as she wanted to get Naruto as far away from the 30-year-old hussy as soon as possible. The receptionist then looked at the clock and saw that the bimbo was right before she begrudgingly asked. What's your name then stud? While keeping her sultry voice which only served to anger Erasa more as a low growl emitted from her throat. Naruto now wanting to get out of there before something happened quickly gave her the name Naruto. When asked for his last name he told the receptionist he didn't have one as his parents had died when he was just a baby and no one knew who they were. This had the effect of making the two women feel like shit as they thought back on how they had just been treating him. The receptionist was then quick to find Naruto's schedule before she handed it to him while saying she was sorry for holding the two up. Once the two had accepted her apology they both turned to leave before Naruto felt something being put in his back pocket and when he turned around to see what it was he noticed it was a note from the receptionist and that she was smiling sensually at him as he left. He decided not to mention this to Eresa as he waved a goodbye to the receptionist as he looked down at her name tag and saw for the first time her name was Rose Satan which he thought was kind of odd, he knew he had heard that last name in particular however he just couldn't seem to pinpoint it. Naruto later found out he had seven classes to attend to each day with the first period being a homeroom where students were allowed to catch up on homework or assignments while notices were called out by the teacher to inform the students of any meetings or upcoming events coming up that they might have to attend. Naruto found he shared this class with Eresa and Gohan as well as that vital girl that Gohan obviously had a crush on and some blonde jock called Sherpner. The classes were in blocks with an interval of lunch in between with there being three classes in the first block and two in each of the following. Aside from homeroom Naruto also took biology, as a ninja he had to know all the ins and outs of a human body, chemistry, math with calculus, English, economics and p. e., all of which he found to his interest when his shadow clones had hit the library during the last few nights he'd been in, Satan City, so that's where he'd heard the name before. He wondered why she ended up with as a receptionist before he remembered the note she had given him he discreetly took it out of his back pocket as he was still in home room with Eresa. The note was short and simple as it said. If you ever need some comfort or just some general loving you know who to call. 753-438-7596 See you around, Rose Satan. Once Naruto had finished the note he smiled but all the same wanted to know why the supposed sister of the world's icon was a single receptionist working at some crummy high school. Maybe he would call this number even if it was just to talk to her about her life and find answers for the many questions bobbling in his head. But before he did that he would have to settle his old problems like actually buying a house and getting an afterschool job so that he could pay for it without looking suspicious. Of the seven classes Naruto found that he shared four classes with Eresa which were homeroom, English, economics and PE and he smirked when he noticed the girl seemed to be taking up journalism. He also found he shared most of those classes with the other three while also sharing biology and chemistry with Vital and Gohan. School went by slowly for the blonde haired demon as he had to constantly question his sanity in actually wanting to go to a place like this, it was boring as hell with the only real highlight being chemistry. Economics and PE since the first two had good teachers and were his favorite academic classes while PE turned out to be sports that Naruto was intrigued with as he had never really played any games other than ninja in his own childhood and was glad to see he was a natural at everything he came across. Well that and the fact that it was always hilarious as hell to see Gohan attempt to not show off his power as he went about in a really awkward manner that left Naruto wondering just how no one had seen it yet though he supposed Vital was close. Naruto was then forced to remember his childhood once again as he remembered the constant stereotypical thoughts he had to deal with and realized with a tired sigh and a shake of the head that the only difference was that Gohan was labeled as a nerd whereas he had been tagged a demon. 
Naruto had to continue to wonder if there truly was any hope left for humanity before he quickly brushed those dark thoughts aside as if you didn't have hope just what did you have, but nothing in Naruto being the hero that he was wasn't quite ready to admit defeat. This was a new world and he'd be damned if he didn't help to save it. Kami had given him a second chance and he sure as hell wasn't going to miss out on it. Or at least those were his thoughts as he flew back home to his, tree, he really needed to sort something out. It had been two weeks since Naruto's first day at Orange Star High and he had finally gotten off his ass and used most of the money he had to buy some average apartment that was just a block away from Holy's ramen shop, what? The man had his priorities straight. During the two week period Naruto had also been having his clones go to the Satan City Library during the night and was happy to see just how far he had come in the last few weeks as he was now pretty sure he had as much knowledge as the teachers who were supposedly teaching him. Naruto had also began hanging out with Arasa more recently as he managed to get a part time job at Holy's Ramen, little did the blonde know that this was all being set up by Holy herself. His relationship with Gohan had gotten a little better and Naruto knew that Gohan had started using one of the gravity chambers that this, Bulma, character had but he was going to make sure the guy knew just how weak he had become due to not taking his role as this world's protector seriously, it was going to be a slaughter, Naruto thought to himself as he let out a sadistic smirk. The other thing that had entertained Naruto over the last two weeks was his relationship with Rose as even though he hadn't called her once he had found himself at the reception a few times over the last two weeks and every time he had made it a goal of his to find out if she was related to the grizzly bear of a hero in any way and if so how close such a beautiful lady was related to a less than pleasant looking man. Rose hadn't given him anything however and because of Naruto's own privacy principles he refused to use his ninja skills in interrogation and resource gathering as he wanted her to be the one that told him. Naruto was currently working in the back of the ramen shop as it was a Saturday morning before he would have the rest of the weekend off which he had already planned out. Saturday afternoon he was hanging out with Arasa at the mall for a while before he would go and train. Sunday was the morning he planned to kick Gohan's ass in order to show the guy just how out of practice he was. He didn't think that was going to take long, and then the last time he had talked with Rose they had organized to meet up for lunch at some cafe where Naruto hoped to finally find out the woman's relation to the world's savoir. After his lunch with Rose he planned to spend most of the afternoon at his training grounds where he would train in controlling his ultimate demon mode which he still hadn't garnered full control of yet, much to his frustration. With all that in mind Gohan made quick work of his work before he headed out to meet Arasa at the mall. To say the next few hours of his life were hectic would be an understatement as the poor teenage boy was dragged mercilessly around the mall at a pace that would have left a lesser man dead and buried. By the end of it Naruto found it had been three hours, all for a couple of new clothes for the girl, although he would admit that seeing Arasa dress up in a number of different dresses wasn't the worst thing in the world. Still he had exited that mall with an empty wallet and a severe decrease in his bank account, another thing Naruto had gained over the last few weeks. After that was all done Naruto left in a hurry in order to get as much training in as possible. Before he could reach his training grounds however he felt a sudden spike of power. Now normally Naruto would write it off as nothing of importance especially because of just how low the power's level was. The thing that got Naruto interested however was the slight feeling of evil he sensed coming from within that power, the fact that it didn't feel. Natural was also a cause for concern in Naruto's books as he decided that training could wait and went to see just what was going on. What he saw when he arrived however only served to confuse the blonde more. Naruto was subjected to a huge clearing which ranged out in between cliffsides and as he searched for the impossibly small spike of dark energy. It was at this time that Naruto wondered why no one else had arrived but just chalked it up to them not having as great of sensing skills as his own, or they were distracted for the mere seconds it happened. Naruto soon took notice of a small indention in the middle of the clearing where he sensed the dark energy was coming from. Taking extra care in making sure he was completely invisible, he used the chameleon jutsu while managing to lower his substantial power level down to the level of an ant, speaking volumes of his control. He then proceeded to make his way towards the dent that he had seen in the clearing while making absolutely sure that his he made no sound. When he finally made it to the dent in the ground he began ever so slowly casting out his energy through the dent as he used his powers to scout out just what was held beneath his feet. Naruto would have gasped in shock if he hadn't been trying to keep his presence unnoticed as he realized just what was lying beneath his feet. An entire spaceship of some sort appeared to be under him with what seemed like hundreds of power levels running through, 
each with an unnatural tinted evil that seemed to overlap their power levels. The thing that scared Naruto the most however was positioned right at the bottom of the ship however as he sensed a power level even stronger than his own but allowed a soft internal sigh to be released as he noticed that it appeared to be contained, for now. It didn't take a rocket scientist to work out what was going on from there as Naruto began to move away from the hidden spaceship with the same level of stealth as when he approached it. He decided that he would not inform the Z warriors of his findings just yet, he would wait till after he demolished Gohan in order to further his point. He also decided to monitor the spaceship on a daily basis as he trained as hard as he could in order to be able to match the hidden potential he had sensed within the confines of that ship. After that Naruto trained extra hard for the rest of the night in his chamber as he began to test the limits of his power once more in order to reach new levels of strength. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX